हे हाई एवरी वन हाउ आर यू डूइंग आई होप एवरी वन ऑफ यू आर सेफ एंड हेल्दी सो टूडे आई एम हियर बैक विथ वन ऑफ माई बेस्ट एक्सपीरियंस ऑफ ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी सो दैट्स वॉट आई पार्टिसिपेटेड इन द डिज़ास्टर रिकवरी ड्रिल आई वुड कंसिडर दिस एज वन ऑफ माई ग्रेटेस्ट लर्निंग्स ऑफ ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी आई वुड डेफिनेटली थैंक माई मैनेजर आरती फॉर एवरी थिंग so this has been like a big journey and um, lots and lots of learnings and it lots of challenges so finally we could participate uh, in the dr drill and it went uh, actually very well i would say so let me share my experience like uh, as how it all started and what we all did during this drill so before uh, this drill right if you haven't checked my uh, video on what exactly qa does for as as part of dr testing i would recommend you go and check out my earlier video which is about dr testing so i all 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 the time uh, spoke about what as a qa we would do during the dr testing and how to scope in and scope out scenarios based on the infrastructure setup of your disaster recovery site so having said that now i come to the pre dr uh, dr drill activity so uh, by this time like before i participate in the actual dr drill during the maintenance window i will make sure that i completed my dr testing on those dedicated uh, disaster recovery urls so i already have my scenarios list which i tested at this point and everything was fine and that is what let me participate in the actual dr drill now the second point is always work with your devops before your dr drill always make sure that the code is updated in both the regions the primary which your actual real users are using and then your secondary the disaster recovery site should be updated with the latest code there there should be like all the octopus variables should be deployed correctly and should be up to date this is uh, what you have to coordinate with your devops and ensure that this is up to date and next comes your scenarios now based on how your infrastructure is set up on the secondary site and based on what type of uh, uh, dr uh, pattern did you choose like is if it's a hot cold hot hot or what whatever right hot warm so based on that come out with the scenarios this is definitely slight confusing like if you're uh, getting involved for the very first time like how i am for me i had lot of questions for which i always reached out to my manager and i had multiple calls with my dbas devops and everybody were very helpful and once i understood like what kind of infrastructure is being set up i had to scope out some of my scenarios so scope in and you know you will get to know the exact scope if you understand the secondary backup site correctly like how it's being configured so by this time in the pre drill you already are up to all these points and you know what to test get your scenarios reviewed by all uh, your uh, Uh, people like your manager first my my first uh, go to person is my manager and she like she answers all my dumb questions also very very patiently i would i would give like a big shout out to her and i love her so much and then uh, you know devops and uh, dbas everybody were very helpful so always uh, get your scenarios you know reviewed by them and on the day of actual drill so what happened is this happened during the night time during like you know when you there are there is no user traffic right so we chose it during midnight like 12 to 4 is our maintenance window so we asked users uh, to refrain from machine like you know using the applications and uh, we told them that there is a maintenance activity going on during that during that time so there are actually you you have to consider like um take it as two part testing f- from our side right from qa side test uh, test the failover so once the primary is failed over to the secondary region so when we say failover there are certain configuration changes that has to happen the back end so what your dbas and uh, you know your devops will take care of so once this is done you will actually test your application on the secondary site which is your disaster recovery site so get or that is the part 1 of your testing and then you are good with your testing you are done like you know in an hour or so you are good with your uh, part 1 testing on the secondary site now there is a fail back testing what is this mean is failing back is getting back your region to your primary 
and now you can just you can't just get back it and leave it like that right you have to do your sanitary testing to ensure that you know your site is up and none of the configuration changes that were made is actually screwing up your real production site so for that you have to ensure that all the sanity scenarios works fine on your primary test that is the second part of our testing so this is like two parts testing now part one failover so failover testing like as a qa you know what to test and you know you will get a go sign from the concern teams like dbs devops to actually start your testing but what is happening is something that we have to know so when we say failover right there there like you know there are different mechanisms what your uh, d database administrators or devops will follow based on the infrastructure setup so for example if it is a sql server if your application is using sql server database the failover is little different and if your application is using postgres aurora database the failover mechanism will be little different like you know the your dbs would know what kind of uh, you know what changes they have to make but for us right like when i was involved in multiple calls with dbs dbs this is what i understood so it sql server according to like dbs it's very straightforward there is no much configuration change that you would take like once the primary is down right immediately it restarts the application the secondary and it would without any human intervention the secondary would come up so sql server failover would be like you know it's a straightforward way so a failover if i just have written i have summarized this a failover is a process that happens if one node crashes or becomes unavailable and then what happens now once it is unavailable the other one takes over so it is like you know there is no downtime or anything here so this is like a pretty straightforward one which just happens in like couple of minutes now comes to the aurora postgres now in your application is using aurora postgres there are again number of ways inside this or if you are using aurora postgres also there are four or five ways as how the failover mechanism would be implemented now in my case like we you we use the aurora uh, failover uh, uh, mechanism something like this so what happens my primary and database is what uh, aurora uh, consider that as aurora 1 now i have a secondary database which is aurora 2 whatever right now i'm like before disaster recovery before any configuration changes right when i create any data in the primary when user is creating data in primary it would be mirrored to secondary so both of them will be in sync with respect to the data wise okay that is read only now during the actual disaster we don't want read only we actually want to create data you have we want to make it writable and test everything that as a real customer would do so this is slightly different here now in order to make it writable dbs have to make some configuration changes so what they have to do is they have to detach the cluster from the global database and then promote it as a standalone promote the secondary cluster as a standalone regional cluster what this would do why they have we have to do why they have to you know change this uh, configuration is in order to make it writable so once this configuration changes are made then this is what a postgres change means and then once this configuration is done they will let us know that we can start testing that's when we would actually start testing our applications so this is something different than sql server but yes this is like you know this is how it is set up and this is the property of the aurora database having it writable we need to detach it from the global database and then have a standalone uh, cluster for its own so this is what was if your application is using aurora we, you would go with this but again like you know this is what something dbs would do now once the failover happens like you know what devops would do is they all like we already coordinated with them and made sure that the code is up to date now there's something called route 53 so route 53 is a kind of web service if you have heard about health checks right so the route 53 comes into picture and what it does is if any of your servers application servers are unhealthy if it detects any unhealthy nature of your server right it will automatically direct the traffic to the secondary server it is the duty of route 53 load balancer to actually take this uh, i would give one example here mm, let us say for example i want to make a yummy you know pasta today and i go to www.google.com 
I won't expect Google to be down, but just for example sake, I'm saying. So when I am actually as a user typing how to make pasta, I would directly go to google.com and make, uh, I'll type how to make pasta or pasta recipe and hit enter. Now at the back end, you know, for example, at the same time Google is, you know, down, the primary is down. It is Google's responsibility to actually direct to me to secondary. As a user, it's not my responsibility to see like, you know, at the back end what exactly is fetching my data. It is Google's responsibility to take care of this routing. I only like, you know, care about what recipe I see, whether I have my ingredients or not. So my focus would be on google.com. So route 53 is what will check the unhealthy nature of the application server at the back end and then divert it to the healthy one. So all this setup has to be done by DevOps. There will be like a configuration like setups, the health check um, protocol. So they would do that and make sure that this is like, you know, directed correctly in case primary fails. Now comes QA. Now after all this setup, they will give us go for the part one testing, which is failover testing. I do all my testing and in case some of the test fails based on the infrastructure, I should know like why my test. This is some wonderful point which my manager had actually, you know, told us. So disaster recovery testing is not like your functional testing. Like it, it is part, I mean, I would say it, it is functional testing, but you do have to do it smartly because in the infrastructure setup of B, right, you might not have everything. Uh, as you have in A, based on the type of plan that you choose, like hot, cold, hot, warm, or hot, hot, right? Based on the type of plan you choose, you might have, may or may not have the exact replica of your A, uh, application A into application B. Now, what happens is, if in case some cross communication or some, you know, cross talking between the application is not working, you should not say that my DR failed. You should, in fact, come up with the reasoning like, you know, this scenario is not it's not uh, uh, passed because the limitation of the infrastructure that we have here but yet my DR drill is passed because I'm able to access so and so sites so to come to this point you have to have multiple calls with your DBAs DevOps of course managers help and then the tech leads and then after the uh, you have you have to scope out correctly like what is exactly covered as part of your DR drill scenarios now after you complete uh, testing and sign off then comes your second part now what happens is uh, after you uh, sign off they will fail back to the primary server this involves again multiple steps like dbas they would remove the secondary postgres cluster which was standalone which was writable at uh, part one testing right now they would remove that and make it like a secondary read only cluster so that whatever I create would be mirrored to this primary, like whatever I create in primary would be mirrored to secondary. And then if it is uh, SQL servers, they'll again uh, use the fail back and uh, divert everything to the primary node. And uh, route 53, if it was set up right, they will change the configuration settings of that too. And once we, we perform a normal sanity test of our production, actual production environment. That's because we have to make sure that if real customer is coming, right, tomorrow if they are using, they should be good. And once you ensure that everything is good, we would sign off and this completes a successful DR drill. And that's when your maintenance window ends. So this is what I have been involved and this has been a great learning for me, the activity, the entire activity. This was the first time I was involved and uh, all the information that i got i heard like the very first time i heard was like the failover and fail back i wasn't aware of the difference either of what is failover and what is fail back until i got to um, involve uh, in this particular activity but starting from there they, there were a lot of new terms that uh, i learned and i'm going to share some of my references from where i collected information and uh, what are the good sources that I found over the internet. Uh, so I'll provide those links in the description. Just take a look and uh, I hope this helps. If you have any more information to share, please feel free to post in the comment section. And uh, again, uh, I'm dedicating my entire learning to my manager uh, because uh, she has been uh, our back and solid support, rock solid support for us from day one. And I would 
uh, definitely say over 94 applications have participated uh, in the DR drill that day and it was all run by one uh, like you know powerful lady I would say according to me so there were so many dumb questions that I had which were answered by her very patiently so definitely I would dedicate my all my DR learning to my manager Aarti Agoramurthy and uh, yeah that's all i wanted to share with you guys so 2020's biggest learning for me is about the day, disaster recovery activity so all of you stay safe and uh, healthy uh, i'll talk to you all soon in coming videos stay tuned bye bye